So we are in the previous section that uh, the importance of doing everything as a sacrifice for Krishna. Otherwise, when he's bound, his actions get carried reactions. Okay. And when, when one does not offer one's food to Krishna, Krishna says he's a thief. And we'll get simple reactions from him. And then Krishna spoke about the cycle of sacrifice. That, um, because bodies depend on food. Food depends on grains and grains comes from Chakya. Chakya comes from prescribed duties. Prescribed duties are described in the Vedas. And this prescribed this descriptions of the Vedas, they come from Krishna. But, um, therefore, we have to offer everything to Krishna. So that is, Krishna says, one who does not follow this cycle of sacrifice, but he lives only for the pleasure of the senses, that um, it is for nothing, in vain. That, um, but therefore, one should act, Krishna says, without attachment to the results, to one's duty, like King Janak did, who attained perfection just by performing prescribed duties. That, uh, and therefore, one should act without attachment to give the example to others. That uh, if one, and therefore, one should give the example. And uh, one should not disturb those who are attached to things, but rather should engage them in service. If one gives the examples, that give the example and actually without attachment, one is a spreader, a leader, and everyone follows leaders. So Krishna has, has spoken in, at the end of the previous section about these devotees who uh, have who are giving the example of to act without attachment. The vote is like Janak and so on. But, and now Krishna is going to speak in this next section about himself. About himself. Previously, he has said, my devotees, uh, they are working without attachment to the result. They don't have anything to achieve in this world. So, now we will speak about himself. Now, I also have nothing to achieve in this world, Krishna. Say so Krishna says, but, but I'm doing my duty as a chatriya. I'm doing my duty. If I should would not do my duty, then that other man will, will follow that. And by that, I will be the cause of unwanted population, destroy the peace, the peace of all people. That uh, so therefore, learned man, everyone who follows my instructions should live an exemplary life so that others follow that and are uh, coming on the path of on the right path, Krishna says. That, uh, so he, he will tell, tell us also to pre how to preach in this third chapter. So don't be disturbed. Don't disturb those who are attached to their results. 
will engage them in the personal service. But, um, so next question. Which knows how to do that, like Narada Muni. But I remember Chayananda Prabhu, the, the one who first was building the first Ratka. And he was building that outside. And um, yeah. And people were on the footpath passing. And 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 he stopped someone and said, You have a moment, can you just hold this this piece of wood here? And the man was holding it and he was <laughs> he was nailing. And, and now the next one. <laughs> so he was engaging them. And and at the end he was he was with with 10, 15 men whom he was engaging, and he was cooking for them and, and they distributing parcels. He was engaging them. That, um, mm. So, and then Krishna speaks about the, the one who is in illusion. And that is a key verse which you will probably need to remember. Prakriti kriyamana nikuna karmana sarvasam ahankara vimudatma kartam iti manyate. But, um, yes, those who are bewildered think they are the doer of things, but everything is done by material nature. Such persons are called vimudas. Vimuda, Viduda, Vimuda. Vimuda. Muda means as. Vimuda, super as. It is strong. But uh, anyway, we will explain that. It's a very important for us. That uh, mm -hmm. then, because the wise man knows that he's not the doer. The senses are engaged with the object of the senses, and that is all done by the super soul. That uh, we will try to understand that. that uh, so even our senses are not ours. <laughs> that uh, the Krishna then says, yes, yeah. Mm. The ignorant man, they engage in material activities, they become attached. But how to act in Krishna consciousness, he will explain them. You have to consider a few things when, because acting in Krishna consciousness means acting with knowledge of knowledge, spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge. So, Oh, it's different from the body. So every action in Krishna consciousness that um, in 3.30, Krishna, Lord Krishna will, will explain, one must act without any sense of proprietorship. That uh, one should act with false ego, without false ego, and without Wanting profit without thinking oneself the enjoyer. That, uh, so that's the beginning of transcendental knowledge. Krishna is the proprietor of everything and therefore is the enjoyer. That, uh, so we should be the void of proprietorship. That sense of this is mine, or the sense this is I am going to enjoy. It. That's a problem. That's acting on the body platform. That uh, so, with that knowledge, if you act with or based on that knowledge, then uh, you don't get reactions. It's our mentality to enjoy and thinking and so forth, right? Then you 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 are responsible. You get reactions. But when you act out of duty. This is Krishna's, and Krishna is the enjoyer, and I use everything in his service. Then no reaction. That, uh, 
Yes, but then Krishna says, yeah. Man should become free from this control of material nature and follow these teachings. And one who does not uh, follow them, he will be bereft of all knowledge. And then afterward, we come in the next session, and then Krishna will speak about the Paripantino, the, the obstacles in the Bible, the devotional service. And that will lead to Arjuna asking a question, and then we go to the last part. So that's a summary of what's coming. It's going to come in the first 40 minutes. So we start with 3.22. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vāsudevāyā so I'm going to read text 22, 23 and 24 to start. Ame Pahtasti Kartavyam Tishalokesha Kinshana Nana Vaktam Avaktavyam Bhaktai Vasakarmani Asuna Hrita there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems, nor am I in want of anything, nor have I need a need to obtain anything, and yet I am engaged in prescribed duties. For if I ever fail to engage in carefully performing prescribed duties so part, so the old man would follow. If I did not perform prescribed duties, all this world would be put to ruination. I would be the cause of creating unwanted population. I would thereby destroy the peace of all living beings. That uh, so here it's our duty to follow the instructions of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. That uh, and those of his representatives, the spiritual masters. But we should not try to imitate Krishna's activities. That if one gets a post without qualification, one will fall down. That's the principle. So the sahajas, those who take spiritual life cheap, that uh, they are. Uh, Imitate the gopis that uh, and dancing with Krishna. It's easy to imitate, but lifting Govardhan that they don't do it, that uh, is not happening. Srila Prabhupada speaks about that. We sing this song daily. Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Bharadari. Krishna is playing with the gopis. The sadhyas take it very easily. But, but Giri Bharadari, that is a very difficult thing. Krishna is covered down hill with his finger, but nobody, nobody is imitating that. Again, Gopi Jana Vallabha, very easy, you are a gopi. I'm Krishna, let us enjoy. That's, that is Sahatya. That is going on. Parakiyaras. All rascality is going on. But one should understand that Krishna can dance with the gopis and he can lift cover down hill, which is also to please the gopis. When there was incessant, incessant rainfall, the inhabitants of Vrindavan became disturbed. They had no other friend but Krishna. And they appealed to Krishna to do something. Immediately erased the whole hill like an umbrella. 
don't imitate Krishna, just listen to Krishna. And then your life is, will be successful. We cannot imitate Krishna. We have to simply follow his order. That is Dharma. And if you imitate Krishna, that is our Dharma. Don't try to imitate. Those are the two words in Sanskrit. Anukaran, Anusharan. Anukaran means imitation and Anusharan means follow. We have to execute Anusharan, follow. Los Angeles, 1976. Um, yeah. So now then goes from. Yeah, that's another thing. We come back to that. Well, Shilapa often condemned pseudo devotees or sahajas who think themselves to be on the highest level of devotional service, but simultaneously are unable to follow the regulated principles. Shilapa himself followed the mood of Lord Chaitanya and rarely discussed Lord Krishna's intimate pastimes in public. Rather, he emphasized the basic principles of Krishna consciousness in his many lectures. Mm -hmm. He condemned pseudo devotees, pseudo sahaja, is they take, they take, take spiritual life see. They want to enjoy in this world and become Krishna conscious at the same time. But when, when the tendency for sense gratification is high, your spiritual life is low. So that must come like this. Tensive for sense gratification go down, and then spiritual strength comes. But, but they want this. And that's a problem. But uh, in '96, first time I went to India, I went to Albert Road, Calcutta. The temple, temple looked a little different on today. I was there, there recently, quite different. A lot of changes. But the first time when I arrived there, there was a boy with a beard dressed as a gopi. <laughs> Very interesting. Never seen such a thing. But, uh, but that should not be done. That's useless. Arjun said in chapter one that, it, it, that he, if he thought the family dynasty would be destroyed and this would cause unwanted population. So Krishna in verse 24 counters that argument and defeats Arjun's reasoning by indirecting, in, indirectly saying, if you ne neglect your duty and decline the fight, the fight, you will be the cause of violence. Good so, mm. to see if we have here yeah, commentaries 22. Balade Vidya Pushan. For me, O son of Prita, there is nothing in the three worlds that has to be done. What the results are to be obtained are not already unobtained by me, but I also perform duties. So that Krishna. If he desires something, his desire is already fulfilled. <laughs> That's uh, Krishna's position. Yeah. Reflection. One must receive the results of work. One who must receive the results of work has some designated duty, but one who has nothing to achieve within the three planetary systems solely has no duty. So then the question for us is, what do I need to achieve in this world? That, uh, that should become sunya, zero. <laughs> that uh, we have nothing 
что от имени свод. Да, там, полгацис, потребуется от имени свод, и конту пасту, да, там, да, сквать кровь, да, полгацис, да, 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 And the material, materialist, there's so much, so many expectations that um, we see these expectations. You, you study your expectation is, yes. After my study, I'm going to get a, a job. And then after the job, I'm going to marry with a nice wife. I'm going to have nice children. And I will give them all a nice education, and they they will all be happy. That, uh, but that that happens only in the cinema. That's not real life. That uh, it's just an idea. At, at at the end, you have to die. Your children have to die. It's all finished. <laughs> that. Uh, Good. Three twenty-four. Twenty-four. If I were not to work, all people would become unlawful. I would be the cause of mixed caste and polluted and would pollute the sons. I thought that's a good picture for Farina Sangha. <laughs> Anyway, that's Balade Pidya Bhusan's comment. Though the Lord teaches in this way, we also see that the Lord sometimes acts independent of the law, desiring happiness for his devotee. Yeah, we should not uh, imitate Lord Shiva drinking poison. That well. Not be good. Following and imitating are not on the same level. We cannot imitate both Krishna lifting cover down hell. Reflections. Do I perform my activities with the intention of obtaining sensual pleasure? Sensual, sensual pleasure. Trying to imitate Lord Krishna, the ultimate proprietor and enjoyer of heaven. That's factually the, the reason why we have we got material bodies, why we are here. Okay, 26, wait. 25 first. Sakta Kamana Vitvamsa, Yatako Vanti Bharatanko Yatvims, Pims Vitvams, Tata Sakta Sikir Suraloka Samha. Samha, as the ignorant perform their duties with attachment to results, the learned may similarly act, but without attachment, for the sake of leading people on the right path. Purpose. A person in Krishna consciousness and a person not in Krishna consciousness are differentiated by different desires. The Krishna conscious person does not anything which is not conducive to the development of Krishna consciousness. So we see the devotee and the, and the materialist, they do the same thing. The, the, the materialist is eating, we are also eating. But the idea is different, the desire is different. That the materialist is working and we are working. The materialist is working for profits, for his, his sense enjoyment. We are working for Krishna. Externally, it looks the same, but it turns, but it's completely different. The motivation is different. The desire. Krishna consciousness is changing desire. Whether you get karma or not depends on your desire. And that uh, this is twenty-five. So that's also mentioned here. A devotee in Krishna consciousness and a non-devotee are different, differentiated by different desires. That, uh, rather, yeah, by different desires. 
The non-devotee works to satisfy senses and the devotee works to satisfy cooperation. Yeah. So that's the difference. We should, should just give the example by working without attachment, by working for Krishna. And no need to preach to them. We can only preach to those who want to be instructed by us. That's very important. That uh, Krishna tells us in the 18th chapter. He will tell our faces, gives the essence of Bhagavad Gita. One who studies this dialogue between Arjun and me, he worships me with this intelligence. That's what we are doing now. And then Krishna says, and um, one should share this knowledge only with my devotees with, and not with those who are envious or not austere, who are not my devotees. That, that, um, so, although we cannot directly preach to them, Krishna says not to do. Although the devotee of Krishna sometimes wants to be more merciful than Krishna and still try to preach. It, but it gives happier reactions. <laughs> that, uh, but still we can preach to them in this way, by giving the example. That, uh, and one day they will understand this person is different. This person is more happy. This person is more less disturbed than I am. This person is strong in character. character. <laughs> so that's preaching. Uda, that this is in the 11th count. That, you know, in the 10th count also, Uda has been sent to Vrindavan. Because Krishna had promised I come back, but he can, could not go because Jarasandha would attack Mathura. So he sent Udav. Udav, a the pure devotee of Krishna. But he wanted Udav to learn something. And there he had letters from Krishna for the gopis, and he met with the gopis and was reading this letter. But then by observing Shimatarani and this Kopis, he became overwhelmed with love. He was thinking, this Kopis has much more love than I for Krishna. That time. So he was learning his lessons. The love of the birds of answers. But, um, but the gopis were not preaching to him. But they were preaching by their behavior, by their example. And they were the greatest preacher. And what did they do? They, they did their household shows and churning the butter. <laughs> so all these things they they. But internally, they were always thinking of this. That, and they were the greatest preachers. But they did not say anything. But, um, so, Buddha understood. Good text 25, 26, 26. Nambu chanayat. Achyanam Brahma Sangyam Yosayat Sarva Karmani Pitpan Yukta Chamachan. So as not to disturb the minds of the ignorant men attached to the fruitive results of prescribed duties, a learned person should not induce them to stop work. Rather, by working in the spirit of devotion, 
you should engage them in all kinds of activities for the gradual development of personal consciousness. That uh, so we should engage others in Krishna conscious activities. That uh, how to preach, we will learn in the 12th chapter. Krishna will, will say in four verses, if you cannot think always of me, then follow the regulated principles of devotional service by perform sadhana. If you cannot do that, then uh, yes, do some work for me. That, uh, and if you cannot work for me, then give some donations. Anyway, it gives many possibilities, and we'll see how Krishna advises to preach the that um, so in the purpose therefore a realized soul in Krishna conscious should not disturb others in their activities or understanding but he should act by showing how the results of all work can be dedicated to the service of Krishna the learned Krishna conscious person may act in such a way that the ignorant person working for sense gratification may learn how to act and how to behave at the end, for this fortunate man, there is no need to follow the Vedic rituals because by direct Krishna consciousness, one can have all the results one would otherwise derive from following one's prescribed duties. That um, so does the highest duty, serving Krishna. Um, yes, the ignorant. Is those who think they are the doer. They are attached. They think they are the doer. And Krishna will speak about them in the next class. First, 26. So in summary, a devote should not disturb the mind of others by encouraging them to renounce work. No. Rather, he should show by his example how to act and behave by dedicating all the results of his work to Krishna. So, though a person may be fixed in knowledge, he should not disturb the intelligence of the ignorance. Ignorance. They think they are their body. We don't have to tell everyone we are not a body. <laughs> that, uh... So, if if he disturbs their intelligence, then they will lose faith in performing duties and also not attain jnan. They thus will lose, lose on both fronts, but if it is bush. So, fish for now. Instead, you should engage them in action by saying, perform actions without desire and become successful. Doing those actions, you set an example for others. Because if they do that, start to act not out of lust, but just out of duty and not, and not attached to the result, then they will come to goodness and, and get the ability to, to begin to understand transcendental knowledge. To begin to understand. Not everyone can understand this knowledge. But, uh, we heard that before in the amazing verse. Some they understand, are amazed about spirit soul. But, um, and, but some cannot understand it at all. Yeah. That's interesting. That, um, yes. So by direct Krishna consciousness, one can have all the results one would otherwise derive from following one's prescribed duties. There are so many verses in Bhagavad Gita. Ananya Sintiantimam Yetana Payabhasti Tisam Nitya Vyukyam Yogaksima Bhamu. Krishna says, my devotee, I will I will give him everything needed. The voice Krishna consciousness. That uh, and uh, I will protect this Krishna consciousness. That's Krishna's care plan for those who are in 
you act in Krishna consciousness. That uh, it gives them what they need, not what they want. <laughs> that, that we should always understand it. Sometimes Krishna gives us a bitter pill because we need it. Uh, uh, yeah. But that's out of love. But reflection. Can I be straightforward in preaching without disturbing others? That um, we will hear more about that in uh, many verses. That um, seventeen fourteen on it fiacram vacam posterity of speech. That's an important instruction. 27, that's a key verse. Once I, the the words were asking, how do I memorize Sanskrit first? What's the method? Hmm? You want to know the Vedic method? How to do that? How to memorize verses? How they did it in the Vedic time. Hmm? Repetition. Yeah. Once I was with, there were 30 devotees. And I told them, they will apply this system. And you will, at the end, you will all have memorized the verse. Hmm? It took an hour, but everyone memorized the verse. So the Vedic method is, you start with the first word, which is Prakriti here. And then you see Kriyaman, Kriyamanani. Prakriti Kriyamanani, you say 10 times, Prakriti Kriyamani, Prakriti Kriyamani, Prakriti Kriyamani, 10 times. And then you take the second word and the next, the next one. Kriyaman, Kriyamanani Gunai. And you say it ten times. And then you go to the next. Gunai karmani. And you say it ten times. And then karmani sarvasa. You say it ten times. And then sarvasa ahankara. You say it ten times. And then ahankara vimudatma. You say it ten times. And then you say vimudatma kartam. You say it ten, ten times. And then kartam iti. You say it ten times, and then iti maniate, you say it ten times, and then you go backwards. Maniate iti, maniate iti, maniate iti, ten, ten times, and then you say iti kartam, iti kartam, ten times, and then kartam vimudatma, kartam vimudatma, and you go backwards. And when you are back to prakati, then you 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 say prakati kiamanani. And then 10 times, and then guna karmani sarvasa, 10 times. And then you say prakati kiamani guna karmani sarvasa, 10 times. And then you say ahankara vimudatma 10 times, kartam itimanyate 10 times. And then ahankara vimudatma kartam itimanyate 10 times. And then you say the whole verse 10 times. So we, we were there we with 30, and I said, let's start. Prakati Kiyamanini, and the next Prakati Kiyamanini, everyone repeated. And we went to all that system, and it took nearly an hour, and everyone knew the verse. That's how you learn the Vedic system, to learn the verses. That, uh, and we, we learned this verse. That, um, so the spirit soul bewildered by the influence of false ego thinks himself of the duro practice that are activities that are in actually carried out by the three modes of material nature. It's important in Bhagavad Gita. There are 16 topics in Bhagavad Gita. I will show you a scheme about that. Probably that's also in your handbag, something like that. 16 topics. 
And then you have all the chapters and the verse numbers where you find the topic. Of course, uh, I know them practically by heart because I'm used to that. But it's important, like this first practical yaman, and we, we are not the doer. Where does Krishna speak about that in other verses? So I'm going to read a few other verses to demonstrate what Krishna means here. Hmm. So he says, the spirit soul, bewildered, bewildered by the influence of false ego, thinks himself the doer of activities, which are actually carried out by the three modes of nature. What does the soul do? What's the activity of the soul? Desire, being attached. Yes. That's the only thing that, that we do. We are the cat of the doer by desire. So I, I, I desire to speak now, but it's the super soul who speaks, who organizes the speaking, that will co coordinate my thinking, the lips moving, that uh, in cooperation with the powers of nature, Adidaibika, which is controlled by the demigods. Hmm? When I explain this first during a Sunday feast lecture, I always say, Krishna is in the heart. I want to move my arm, and Krishna notices that desire. He's in my heart, and he takes the phone, calls the demigods. Three, 33,000 million demigods. He calls and said, so this guy down here want to move, has a desire to move his, his hand. Please make a plan. So they have, they have a, a meeting, uh, a work meeting, and the demigod with the, who is responsible for the, the lower arm muscles and the one for the higher arm muscles, are there in the demigods for, for for the air and and they make a plan, yeah. If we combine our energies so it's it's going to happen. Okay. The, they call back, the demigods call back to the super soul in the heart and say, Yes, we have a plan. So Krishna in the heart says, Okay, go for it. And then the hand moves. But but we think that it's going so quick, I've done it. But Krishna says, Vimuda, a super ass, you are not doing it. We will learn that in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna in the heart is called Anumanta, the permitter, but it's also the witness in the heart. He witnesses our desires. That's and if we deserve, it's fulfilled. Because if Krishna does not want that you move your arm, it will not move. That, um, so if we start to see that, we see the super soul in action everywhere in everybody. And that's called divine consciousness. And Krishna will speak about that in chapter 5, Divine Consciousness, verse 8 to 12. 8 to 12. Now, if I can sit coming to you, to my little thought for it, for some spirits, for some sikhan, for some, 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 for a person in divine consciousness always engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping, breathing, and always knows, his, knows in himself that he actually does nothing at all. I only desire that uh, because while speaking, ev evacuating, receiving, opening, closing, his eyes, it always knows that the material senses are engaged with their objects and that he's aloof from them. 
So the, the senses are engaged with their objects. And that's all done by material nature. Material nature is controlled by Krishna as a super soul. Krishna says that personally in the ninth chapter. That uh, death, he says, my yadyaksena prakriti chuchari chacharam. I'm the superintendent of material nature. So I, I will just go to other verses, which on this subject. That's just to show how all these connections are there. And then you start to see the Gita as one unit. As if you don't have that insight, you don't have a grasp of the of the Gita. But you, you know bits here and there, but you don't see the, the whole picture. Hmm? Like in the fifth chapter, Krishna, and that's interesting, in 514 says. The embodied spirits, master of the city. So where the city is the body. Hmm? It does not create activities. We don't create activities, Krishna say. That's done by material nature. Nor does he induce people to act. Nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is done by material nature. So it says, we are only desire, otherwise we are nothing, doing nothing in this world. That, uh, so it's Krishna doing. So are we then responsible? Yes, we are responsible. Because we push the button <laughs> by, with our desire. And Krishna executes the orders as we deserve. Therefore, Krishna says, now that they carry a chitpakam, not sheva, sukhetam, people, ajani, naptam, kanam, tenem, yanta, sam, yanta, ba. Know the Supreme Lord, assume one sinful or pious activities. Embodied beings, however, are bewildered because of ignorance that covers their knowledge. So Krishna says, I'm also not doing that. Uh, it's material nature. <laughs> that, it's not the only we push the button. So that's important to understand. Now Krishna goes further. That uh, 13th chapter. Takes 35 or something, I think. That will is because the last chapter is all about yam, that supports our devotion service. Yeah. Text 30. 1330. We can see that all activities are performed by the body, which is created of material nature, and sees that the self does nothing, actually sees. The same thing is said here. That, um, so the body is a machine to fulfill desires. We put the button, we push the button by our desire, but otherwise we are not doing anything. Where is it? How can we know that we are putting the button, pushing the button? We'll speak about three buttons in the fourth chapter. The real fun comes tomorrow. But 18 chapter, 1814, that's interesting. That's again on the same subject matter. Adistanam totaka, takarnam sapitak vidam vivida sapitak cheva, daivan shaivatra panchanam. Panch, five, five factors that. Uh, Five factors of action. First, for every action, you need a body, a distanam. Who controls the body? The body is material nature. 
until nature is controlled by Krishna. We are not controlling the body. But then there is the karta, the performer. There is a doer, the one who performs the karta. That's the spirit soul who desires. We are acting by desire. And then you have the third factor, are the senses, the karana, the senses. It's also part of the body. It's controlled by material nature. Krishna controls the blood going to the veins for the moment, that so uh, that I can move my hands. It's Krishna doing hmm? that. Uh, and then the different kinds of endeavors would co who come up into the subtle body, the mind. The subtle body is also matter, is also controlled by the super soul. Krishna says that in 1515, for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness, all the knowledge in our mind. All your intelligence coming from its material nature comes from Krishna. We are not controlling what we can think. You can try. <laughs> then it's Krishna. And then there is the super soul, that's the fifth factor. The super soul controls the adhistanam, the body, controls the karnam, the senses, and controls all this, yeah. Pitak Fidam Shesta, the endeavors that come into the mind. So, five factors. And we are only one of the five. And what's the difference between the, the Vimuda and us? We know we are one of the five factors. The devotee knows. We know that we are also the doer. But we are not the doer. That's Krishna. Whatever we do, if Krishna willing, then it will happen. That uh, so that is important information. If you understand this knowledge and realize this knowledge, every moment you think, yeah. I try to do that, Krishna willing, it will happen. That when there's nothing himself to do us, we have a partnership, we are co-pilots in this body. <laughs> and we forget our co-pilots <laughs> and we get in trouble. But that is important. That, uh, okay, this is just an example how one verse connects with so many others in Bhagavad Gita. But I can continue for hours like that on practically each verse and tell you how it connects. So we have to learn this. Learning Bhagavad Gita is a lifetime experience. And we should never stop it because it's fascinating. And, and even if we are not so spiritually advanced, Based on in this knowledge, through this knowledge, you will start to see Krishna acting in this world. It is it's very powerful, this knowledge. Never stop studying Bhagavad Gita. Study it combination with the Bhagavatam. That, uh, so this, this word, Bhimudatma, it's, it, it's a very strong word. A devotee was distributing books in an airport in the 70s here in America. And uh, he came across an Indian person. And the, per the person, he wanted to give him Bhagavad Gita, but the, pe the person was a, was a bit obnoxious, not nice. He said, uh, that I, I don't I don't want to hear about this 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 Krishna and this Gita. Well the, the devotee said, 
Krishna says then here in Bhagavad Gita, Avajanun Temamuda, you are a, a muda, you are a vimuda. And the man became very angry. And, and he went to a police officer and said, he's calling me a vimuda. And, and the police officer said, muda. <laughs> anyway, it's a very strong word Krishna is using here. That uh, we moved up. So the person bewildered by pride thinks that is the doer of actions, which are being done completely by the senses made of faculty. That uh, yes. so you see people, great politicians, poli promising so many things, but they don't are aware they are speaking, uh, speaking. The, and they are speaking with 10 kg of stool in their body ready to pass. They don't understand their situation. How they are dependent on material nature. Every, every moment things can be finished. And we depend completely on Krishna. And the devotee knows that. Therefore, before we do something, for in Krishna conscious, what do we do? That we pray to Krishna, please help me, empower me. I want to please you. I, I promise, it's not for me, I will do it for you. That, uh, so if we are aware of this knowledge, you become humble. That, that you become humble. And if you are humble, Humility, you will get a deep, deeper insight in the knowledge. Humility is the qualification to get the knowledge and to understand the knowledge. It's the first item of knowledge or the process of knowledge in 13, 8 to 12, Amani from humility. That, so the person in material consciousness is convinced by false ego that he's the doer of everything. That's the typical American. I will do it in my strength. <laughs> that I make my plans with my intelligence. I will get it. I will get. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the false ego. Not only the Americans, everyone. He does not know that the mechanism of the body is produced by material nature and that the material nature works under the supervision of the Supreme Lord, not under his control. That, uh, so the person in false ego takes credit for doing everything independently. Like if everything is under the control of Krishna. So I asked Gopa uh, Swami Prabhu is a Prabhupada disciple from France and he has worked many years as a medical doctor and I asked him yes if Krishna controls everything what's the use of being a doctor then that you are not in control that's also in the Bhagavatam Palat Maharaj says yeah, you can have the, the best doctor, but still the patient dies with the best medicine. But you can have the best boat, but still there is a storm and one drowns. But, uh, but, uh, so you can be the best parent to protect your child, but then your child becomes unprotected and dies. But so we have I asked him, what, what's then the use of being a doctor? Well, I didn't ask him like that, but I, we discussed about free will. But what can we do to cure someone? What is our power? And the answer is, everything will happen according, according to your karma. You cannot go against it. But that you have a limited sphere of influence. Limited. 
And by taking a good medicine, you can improve yourself a bit. That, uh, so by, we, we learned that also in Bhagavad Gita. Yes, if you live in the mode of goodness, you are, your quality of life is good. That, uh, so we, we may be in a mode of passion or ignorance. Ignorance is suffering, but you can change your modes by your free will, by association. In the Udap Gita, Krishna says to Udap, 21 ways to change your modes. But, uh, so that depends on us. We have a little freedom, but it is limited. Ultimately, question. Yeah. I'm also a very busy. Yeah. But uh, uh, there is a thing in technical practice that says, I dress the moon for him. I dress the moon? And... I dress the moon. Yeah. I dress the moon. Yeah. I'm just spinning it up. Yeah. But I'm not the one who is healing it. Yeah. So healing is my problem. Yeah, it's not my problem. That's what it's a saying in the technical practice. Yeah. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So the person in false e ego takes all credit for doing everything independently. So Krishna will say later in Bhagavad Gita, I'm the capability man. It's not our dear capability. Everything that we have is Krishna's capability. And if you become proud of it, you become proud of something which is not yours. That. It's stealing the honor from Krishna. That, uh, that's false ego. Ignorant man forgets that the Supreme Personality of God is known as Rishikesh, master of the senses of the material body. For due to his long misuse, the senses, yeah, in senses in sense gratification, one is bewildered by false ego. Make him forget his eternal relationship with Krishna. So if we if we don't see Krishna in our life, if we don't see Krishna acting to us as a controller of material nature, we are in illusion. So how deep is our illusion? How deep is it? That uh, and 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 why do we think we are the doer? That false ego comes from lust. We will hear it later today. 28. Tatva vittu mahava o gunaka mavi bhagya o gunaka neshi bhaktante iti matva na satyate. When we see knowledge of the absolute truth, the mighty arm does not engage himself in the senses and sense gratification. No one, knowing well the difference between work in devotion and work for fruitive results. Mm -hmm. So that's always in the mind of a devotee. I must work, do, do things for Krishna, not for my son's gratification. Because otherwise, I get entangled, I get in difficulty. That, uh, therefore, he knows the difference between working in bhakti devotion and working for fruitive results. That, uh, because he knows it's a spirit soul. He knows I'm a part and parcel of Krishna and I'm supposed to be full of bliss, happiness and knowledge. That, uh, and now I'm entrapped in thinking I'm this body. That... Uh, so, therefore, I must connect all, where, all, all my activities with Krishna. And that's called the dovetailing technique. In carpentry, you have these two pieces of wood, and one is holes, and the other is something coming out, and it fits perfectly in each other. So, what we are good in, we must do for Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna. And that is dovetailing. So we have this 
person, this bewildered person here, thinks by pride things as these, the doer of action, which are being done completely by the senses made of faculty. So he's certainly thinking that he's doing it. Cooperation between Prakati and Shiva. So that's what I said. We have a co-pilot. And we forget the co-pilot. We must cooperate with it so that, that the doership of the Atma is only made possible by the body, senses, and life airs, and by the Paramatma, who is the activator of all things. The Jiva is not the only factor. So there were five factors of action we have seen. 1814, two verses later in the 1836, one who does not consider these five factors is not very intelligent. So that's a remote hmm? The jiva is not the only factor. That the jiva thinks that he is the only doer is a result of bewilderment from false evil. This is understood from three verses in the 18th chapter, starting with Adhisthanam Tathagartha. So that is what I've explained. That's a connection. I see Valadev Vidyabhushan makes also that connection. That's uh, interesting. So the person in false ego takes credit for doing everything independently. So how can I tell if I'm humble or arrogant? That, um, Arrogant means taking Krishna's position. I'm the only doer. By my grace, it all happens. Not <laughs> Krishna. But the wise person who knows that he is different from the sense and their actions are my time is not attached to the sense objects, understanding that only the senses are engaged with their sense object. Not Krishna. So, I'm not at all the senses, nor the sense objects. There's no relation, a relation between me and the senses or the sense objects at all. As deep knowledge. I'm not my body, I'm not my mind, I'm spirit. And uh, yes, three turned to mind. The knower of the absolute is convinced of his awkward position. So these men are taking lunch in an awkward position in the screen. But it's be sure it's in a cinema or <laughs> they project it behind them. It's not real. <laughs> but it's interesting. But, uh, the knower of the absolute is convinced of his awkward position in material association and engages himself in the activities of devotional service and becomes not a unattached of the activities of the material sense, which are circumstantial and temporary. It's called Tattva Vit, who, who he knows also his own factual position in relationship to the So, Am I aware about my awkward position, material nature? It's not only the, the pilot here who is getting out of things that uh, we are the pilot. Well, we have a co-pilot in this body. That um, it is it's an awkward position. You think about it. Just this. His heart is beating when you take birth. And at one time it will stop. We don't know if we will get the next beat. If it stops beating, you get a heart attack. And we don't control it. Krishna controls it. It's just thinking about that. Uh, and then all, all, all these things which happen in the body inside, better not to think about it. We meditate on yeah. uh, the medical man, they know what's under the skin. It's, it's different. <laughs> the super soul uh, control, it controls all these things. Not uh, okay. Now, 29. Pakite guna samuda, sujante guna kalmaso. 
Danna Krishna Gidama, Danna Krishna Vinna Vichanya. Bewildered by the modes of material nature, the ignorant fully engage themselves in material activity and become attached. But the wise should not unsettle them. Although these duties are inferior due to the performance lack of knowledge. So those who are bewildered become attached. That, uh, and this attachment is the cause of suffering. Should always consider. What are the causes of suffering? It's forgetting Krishna. If you forget Krishna, you forget yourself. You think yourself the body. False I. And then you start to think in terms of the body. The body wants to enjoy. I want this for this to be mine for my enjoyment. And then you think it's mine. But you think something is mine. That you think this is my husband. But then something really happens in the relationship. And because you think it's mine, you suffer tremendously. Because you are attached. That uh, you think this is my car. That's like some, someone comes inside and says, I just saw a frontal collision of two cars. You will say, yeah, that happens every day. But then the person comes in and says, I just saw a frontal collision with your car. Someone bumped into your car. That's serious. What's happening there? <laughs> Immediately you feel the pain. And you think it's mine. That are my children, it's my house. Mine, 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 mine. It's all this mine, 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 mine is kartam kitimani, vimudata. That is vimudata. Uh, one becomes attached and one suffers. But the devotee is not attached. He knows, like Marge breaks it, he, know, he had seven days. It's not going to make much plans anymore. So we should always think, tomorrow I may have to go. Okay. I, I asked one of our swamis 20 years ago, uh, where will you be in, in four months for me? He said to me, I, I don't make plans more than three months. That, um, so that's good. But, um, you don't know if you are still there. But, uh, yeah. So yeah, 29. Anyway. So... All the Krishna advises devotees not to agitate the mind of materially engrossed persons. The devotees of the Lord are more merciful than the Lord because they understand his purpose. Therefore, they take all risks to enlighten even ignorant men and engage them in Krishna consciousness. But of course, that there's these reactions. <laughs> that, uh, mm -hmm. In the purple, they accept bodily connections with others as kinsmen. The land in which the body is obtained is their object of worship, and they consider the formalities of religious rituals to be ends in themselves. Men who are ignorant cannot appreciate activities in Krishna consciousness, and therefore Lord Krishna advises us not to disturb them and simply waste valuable time. But the devotees of the Lord are more kind than the Lord because they understand the purpose of the Lord. Consequently, they will undertake all kinds of risks, even to the point of approaching ignorant men, to try and engage them in acts of Krishna consciousness, which are absolutely necessary for human beings. And now text 30. Text 30 is important. Text 30 explains the knowledge required to act as a spirit soul. You must act based on this knowledge. Mai sarvani karmani sanyasya chyatma sitasa nirasiran nirmamo bhutva yutyasva yatashvara. Therefore, O Arjun, surrendering all your works unto me, with full knowledge of me, 
without desire for profit, with no claims to proprietorship and free from leadership rights. So it says, yeah, it says, Nira Sir, Nira Sir, without desire for profit. So the result is for Krishna, not for me, no desire for profit. That Nirmama, not thinking this is mine. No, this belongs to Krishna. Therefore, we must use it in Krishna's service if it's under my care. That with knowledge of Krishna, I'm not Krishna, I'm the servant of Krishna. That. And then we should be fight without being sentimental. <laughs> by doing our duty, doing our service for us. For well, Arjuna, it was fighting for us. Luckily, it's not fighting. <laughs> we can't do so many service. But it's based on this knowledge. And unless you act based on this knowledge, you act on the body platform. You need this knowledge to act as a spirit soul. Not that. So this first clearly indicates the purpose of Bhagavad Gita. So to understand this is a very important verse. The purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to act on basis of this knowledge. The Lord instructs that one has to become fully Krishna conscious to discharge duties as in, as in military discipline. That uh, the cashier may count millions of dollars for his employ employee, but he does not claim a cent for himself. Similarly, one has to realize that nothing in the world belongs to any individual person, but that everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. And that we see. So, offering, holiday for the Abhushan, say, offering all activities to me. Being fixed in the soul. I'm that little spark in the body. That's me. <laughs> and without desire for results, without possessiveness, and without suffering, fight. So fighting becomes teaching. You should be the void of the concept of being the doer. As a servant dependent on the king performs actions according to the king's order, you should perform your actions according to my order with a desire to teach the people. So Krishna says, yes, by that you give the example, you teach people. So the cashier may count millions of dollars for his employee, but he does not claim as a single cent for himself. But, uh, Reflections. What were my experience when in the past I acted selfishly to attain positive results? Were you happy? <laughs> but, um, depressed? So many things. It doesn't go well. It never works out. And that's a good one. Okay. That is. The end of the first section. Now we will go into the next section. And this is a summary, but I will just tell you from my own knowledge what uh, is going to happen now till the end. But, uh, so, Krishna. He will say, yes, if you follow this teaching in 330, how to act as a spirit soul, you will become free from bondage, from happy. But if you don't follow this, then all your endeavors for perfection will be fooled. That, uh, and then he stresses to Arjun, Arjun, you must act according to your nature that, uh, that you have gotten by the from the modes of nature. You cannot repress them. 
you must use them in my service. And while serving, while using them in my service, you should act without attachment or aversion to things in this world. Because attachment and aversion are paripantino. They are obstacles of the spiritual path. Therefore, you have to do your duty and not try to do the duty of others. That, uh... But then Arjuna says, Krishna, you say this attachment and aversion, but there is a force which is stronger than me, which, which, which forces me to act according to this attachment and aversion. What is this force? That uh, Rajun said, I, I cannot overcome it. It's something which is stronger. That, uh, so we see that ordinary people in this world, they act according to their likes and dislikes. That uh, likes and dislikes. It is about 10 years ago, I was in Scotland and they had a festival, and I was sitting in a festival booth in a small tent with a sign, ask a monk, <laughs> ask a question to the monk. And a lady came to me and she said, said can you help me to find my soulmate? So a soulmate, they understand, someone with the same likes and dislikes as I am. That, uh, that, uh, yes, with the same material contamination. The same likes and with the same kind of attachment and aversion. If we act out of likes and dislikes, attachment and aversion, we act as the body not as a soul. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Because as, as, as the body, we want, we want, we don't want distress that we don't like, but what gives pleasure to the body that we like. That's good. <laughs> so that's the body concept of life. And this is, we must overcome that. Is attachment and aversion. We must come above that. We must come to attachment and aversion on the spiritual platform. What's good for Krishna consciousness, we accept. But what's bad for our development of Krishna consciousness, we reject. So that's on the spiritual platform. So Arjun says, What is this for? And then Krishna says, it is lust that you are born of the mother of passion. This lust, Arjun, is the greatest enemy. Enemy number one. Because it covers the, the pure soul's consciousness. It covers the soul, the soul's consciousness. And we see, like, um, like the embryo, embryo in the womb is covered by the womb. That, uh, or like uh, smoke is covering fire, and that covering, actually. Avitram, it covers. What does it covers? Avitram, Jnanam, Etana, your eternal knowledge that you are a servant of, servant of Krishna and the knowledge of the devotion service, it covers. Because that is, this is. 
this knowledge is there in the soul, but it's not a lot for us. We have all a relationship with this, but it covers. And by that you strive to fulfill this attachment and aversion that but it never works out. It's like like trying to put out fire with key. It doesn't it becomes small. And it, and it's never satisfied. Arjun is hearing that and said, enemy number one. Arjun is a military man and he hears this word enemy. Immediately he says, Krishna, where is this enemy? And how can I conquer him? And then Krishna says to Arjun, Arjun, this enemy is in the body, in the senses, in the mind, the intelligence. But to conquer it, Arjun, you must know that the senses are higher than the object of the senses. And the senses, higher than the senses, is the mind. The mind must control the senses. And higher than the mind is the intelligence. The intelligence must act according to intelligence. The, the mind must follow the intelligence. And higher than the intelligence is the soul. So, Arjun, you should strengthen your intelligence with transcendental knowledge how to act as a soul. And then with that intelligence, you should control your mind and engage your mind and senses in the ocean service based on this transcendental knowledge. And if we have transcendental knowledge, and you hear transcendental knowledge, then the soul will have faith and direct by attachment, by desire, the intelligence to engage the mind and sense in the service of Krishna. And then you become a liberated person. So Krishna explains the difference between a liberated person and a conditioned soul. And I said, I'm going to explain something push, just waiting. That, and now, this is important. That uh, the conditions so, like, thinks himself the mind, identifies with the mind, and the senses. So the person looks at his body, he says, oh, I'm a man, and thinks himself a man. And then, this, and then the, the senses perceive a girl, and that perception comes into the mind, and the senses says, all the senses immediately react. They say, the hands say, we want to touch her. And the eyes say, I want to see her beautiful form. And then the ear says, if she speaks, it's so sweet. Nice to hear. That, um, so all the senses push the mind. We want to enjoy. And the mind says, yes, it feels good. Let's enjoy. And the intelligence comes between. But what with morality? And then the mind says, you old fool who speaks these days about morality, do something practical. That uh, make a plan how to meet that girl. And then intelligence comes under control of the mind. 
and the and intelligence says to the mind, okay, you can write a, a letter or an email, and you promise her, you promise her the moon and the sun, and you throw some stars. But don't, don't sign the letter, because just besides her is a strong man, could be her husband. So that is the condition. So it's controlled by the senses. The senses controls the mind, and the mind misuses the intelligence to keep satisfaction to the senses. And that is called an uncontrolled mind. That's the conditioned state. But Krishna says here, oh, Arjun, you have to strengthen your intelligence first with transcendental knowledge. What's the title of the next chapter? Transcendental knowledge. You see the, the connection? Why Krishna is going to speak about transcendental knowledge? How to act as spirit soul? The knowledge required for acting. So if we hear that knowledge, then, and we hear that sufficiently, the soul will direct intelligence to control the mind. The mind comes under control of the intelligence, transcendental intelligence, to engage the mind and senses in the devotional service, to engage the mind in thinking of it, and to engage, to engage the senses in service. And that is a liberated stage. One who acts, who acts always in that way. And that's the way out of suffering. So that is important knowledge. That, um, so that is a summary that uh, we will read the verses now. Good. 31. The persons who execute their duties according to my injunctions and will follow the teachings faithfully without envy become free from the bondage of positive action. So Krishna does that in different places. He says here, if you do this, this you have this result. And the next verse he says, if you do that, you have that result. He does that also in the 18th chapter. There he says, yes, in the 18th chapter, that... Uh, yeah, it does the same thing. If you follow my teachings, you get that result. But if you act up false, false evil, you will be thus lost. And at the end of the third chapter, and fourth chapter, I think, he will say, for the faithful man who has and an, who understands transcendental knowledge gets this result. But if you are not faithful, you're getting problems. So Krishna does that in many times. He does that here also. An ordinary man with firm faith in the internal injunctions of the Lord, even though unable to execute such orders, becomes liberated from the bondage of the law of karma. But then if you don't do that, but uh, those out of envy disregard these teachings and do not follow them regularly, are then are to be considered bereft of all knowledge, but fooled and ruined in their endeavors for perfection. Nothing that comes from it. And that's the action of most people. <laughs> As there is punishment for disobedience, disobedience of, to the order of the, supreme, of, of the Supreme Executive Head, so there is certainly punishment for disobedience, disobedience, disobedience to the order of the personality of Godhead. A disobedient person, however great he may be, is ignorant to, of his own self and of the Supreme Brahman Paramatma, a personality of Godhead. 
due to a vacant heart. Therefore, there is no hope for perfection life for him. And then 33, even a man of knowledge acts according to his own nature for everyone. So for everyone follows the nature he has acquired by the three modes. What can replace the what can a person accomplish? So unless one is liberated on the liberated platform, one must follow, act according to his nature. We discussed that part in the second chapter already. Because the second chapter is a summary also. The materials for Dharma and the spirituals for Dharma. One must do one's material duty as long as one has not attained perfection on the spirituals for Dharma. So it is impossible to get out of entanglement of Maya simply by theoretical knowledge. So one must have practical knowledge. Practical knowledge comes by devotional service. The Dharma Bodhi Yogantam, Krishna gives you realizations to the heart. You should always consider. Theoretical knowledge is good. That those then become dry with the help of a spiritual master to bring that in practice. But unless we get that in practice, it has no use. When you leave the body, you take with you your realizations, not the theoretical knowledge. That, uh, that's important to consider. All the theoretical knowledge is gone. That, uh, but realizations you take with you. That, uh, So, Krishna, Krishna consciousness helps one to get out of the material entanglement, even though one may be engaged in the prescribed duties in terms of material existence. Therefore, without being fully in Krishna consciousness, one should not give up his occupational duties. It is better to be situated in one's position and try to attain Krishna consciousness under superior training. Okay. But, uh, 34. 34, this is this Paripanti, no? There are principles to regulate attachment and aversion. So it's in the yas, in the in the yas, yarte, raga, besha, the apostita, the yoga, sam, agatset, to yas, yaparipanti, no? So you can memorize that easy. Raga is attachment. Besha is aversion. It's the same thing, positive and negative. And then paripantino. These are the obstacles. That, uh, therefore, Krishna's first instruction in the second chapter, one must be tolerate happiness and distress. The happiness and distress. The happiness is our attachment. <laughs> the distress is our aversion. We don't want the same thing. That, uh, yeah, that's, yes. In, in the 34, uh, it, in the purpose, Shila Papa explains, yeah, a man may be married, but he may also feel attracted to other women also, but he should curb this attraction. Keep it under control that and be very careful with it because there, there can even be an accident on the royal road or passage. Interesting. And then text 35, but well, 34 first. That um Okay, I see here. Okay. Thirty four. One not on the level of Krishna consciousness must follow the rules and regulations of the real scriptures which lead to detachment. 
However, if a regulated sense gratification is dangerous, if one becomes too attached to it, therefore it is better to act in Krishna consciousness because one attached to Krishna consciousness is not really detached from material activity. But then takes, yeah. So this desire and hatred are like thieves standing in front of the traveler on the road. And thus, Paladevidya Bhushan, they're like thieves who wants to deviate us from our path of Krishna consciousness. And that's Maya. Maya, the illusion of energy, is in the mind. And, and, and Maya takes advantage, advantage, controls us by the attachment in our works. You will come a plating in the hands of Maya. That uh, so we should be very careful with that. that uh, attachment and repulsion are firmly fixed in each of the sense of it. One should not come under the control of attachment and repulsion. They are two obstacles. That's fish for now. And Srila Prabhupada says, those who are in Krishna consciousness are not really elected to engage in material sense gratification. But those who are not in such consciousness should follow the rules and regulations of the revealed scripture. Two levels. Interesting. Reflections. What are the attachments and aversions I struggle with? Good to think about. How can I overcome these obstacles? That's our application. So, and then Krishna, this is the verse mentioned twice in Bhagavad Gita. There are two verses mentioned twice. This verse and Manmana Bhavmata Tomaji Manmana It's at the end of the ninth chapter and also 1865. Yes, for the more people now, paradigma is finished it out. For the only, need a nuncia, paradigma by Ava. It's far better to discharge one's prescribed duty, even though faultly, than an author's duty is per perfectly. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duty. For to follow another's path is dangerous. The purpose. One should therefore discharge his prescribed duties in full Krishna consciousness rather than those prescribed for others. Materially prescribed duties are duties and joined according to one's psychophysical condition under the spell of the modes of nature. Spiritual duties are ordered by the spiritual master for transcendental service of Krishna. So one must act according to one's psychophysical nature. But this my psychophysical nature. We all know what you are good in, what you like to do. That um, this is your nature. That, uh, so when one is under the spell of the modes of nature, one should follow the prescribed due rules for his particular situation and should not imitate others. Everyone has to cleanse his heart by gradual process, not abruptly. But, uh, however, when one transcends the material modes and is fully situated in Krishna consciousness, he can pre perform anything and everything under the direction of a spiritual master. Yes, if one is purified. In the transcendental state, the distinctions of the material body do not apply. But as long as one is on the material platform, he must perform his duties according to the modes of nature. And at the same time, he must have a full, a full sense of Krishna consciousness. So, yeah. This is the translation of the verse by Paladev Vityabhushan. It is better to perform one's own duty, even if faultly done doing another's duty perfectly. It is better to to die being situated in one's own duties. Performing a notice duty is a cause of misfortune. Krishna, destruction in the course of performing one's duty is better than performing others' duties is dangerous. So the point is, do I act according to my psychophysical nature on the order of the spiritual master? 
That's one function of the spiritual master. He has to, to study how his disciple, how the disciple is situated in, in our real nature and instruct him as such that he uses his capabilities fully in Krishna's service. That's the function of the spiritual master. That's 337, but, okay. Verse 36, Arjuna is asking that question. For the son of Krishna, what is, by what is one impelled to sinful acts, even unwillingly, as if engaged by force? Sometimes, even against our will, the mind can be so strong. If it's contaminated by lust, it engages you in activities you don't want. It's strong. But, uh, and that's a sign of being deeply conditioned. And then Krishna says, Kama is a good day, Rajagun is mud, Pava, Masna, Mapatna, Pityami, Avarna. Since Supreme Personalities of God had said, This lust only, Arjun, which is born of contact with material mode of passion and later transformed into wrath, and which is the altar the boring sinful enemy is formed. In, interesting, Sir Pavel writes in the beginning of the purple. When a living entity comes in contact with, with material nature, his eternal love for Krishna is transformed into lust in, a, in association with the mother of passion. So this love of Krishna is there in our hearts, but it's transformed. Therefore, lust is the greatest enemy of the living entity, and it is lust only which induces the pure living entity to remain entangled in the material world. Rat is the manifestation of the mode of ignorance. Its modes exhibit themselves as rat and other, and other color, cor corollaries. If therefore the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting, then one can be saved from the de degradation of God by spiritual attachment. So the Varnasram system was meant to bring everyone to goodness, that uh, to elevate oneself to goodness. And when one is completely baffled by prolonged lust lustful activities, the living entity begins to inquire about his real position. Lust is transformed into love for the supreme or, or transformed into Krishna consciousness. Or in other words, desiring everything for Krishna, then both lust and wrath can be spiritualized, Prabhupada says. Therefore, the Lord induces Arjuna to engage, to engage his wrath upon his enemies for the satisfaction of the Lord. And that will thus transform it. Interesting. That, uh, so, Baladev Vityabhushan, it is lust and then anger arising from the mode of Rajas. Know this as the great devourer, the great enemy, simple, simple one, the enemy. So, true, but anger is no different from calm. This calm, when obstructed by some living entity, becomes anger, just as milk becomes yogurt by addition of acidic culture, that is the Baladev uh, Vityabhushan making a nice um, comparison. This lust appearing in different forms becomes visible as anger. This means that lust being also obstructed by someone transforms into anger. Lust arises from the mode of passion, and from lust in the mode of passion arises anger in the mode of ignorance. So it degrades you, degrades you. Lust being, tears you down from passion to ignorance. That, uh, yes. But after the fulfillment of the desire, the desire should be finished. No, this lust is, is a great devourer. It is impossible to satisfy the expectations of desire. 
the U.S. we are never satisfied. We want always more and more as this program and our day not so it's going on, but uh, never fully satisfied. Both lust and wrath can be spiritualized. Hanuman burned the city of Ravan. If that is stale. Arjuna engaged his wrath upon his enemies for the satisfaction of the Lord. Then lust and wrath become our friends instead of our enemies. That the power part. Reflections. Do I live in the mode of goodness? Can I use my anger and wrath in the service of Lord Krishna? What are the causes of my dissatisfaction? So we, we had a few days ago His Holiness Nava Yogendra Maharaj here, right? Nava Yogendra Maharaj, that he was with Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur in the 70s somewhere. And we had just built the Lotus Building. We know nearly on top there is Prabhupada's quarters. And so Prabhupada was there. And at a certain moment, because at that time we were using already security guards. And they had to, to make a certain uh, route follow inspection. And they had to be at a certain time at a certain place. And Prabhupada came before his, he came before his door. He looked at his watch and said, this car should have been here now. Get me this car. And uh, so they get this car and this car, car Prabhupada is inside with Navajo Henry Maharaj and the guard comes in. And then Prabhupada starts becomes very angry and start to shout very angry against this man in Bengali. And Nabi Yogyanda Maharaj said, Popat was so angry that I was shivering from the fear. And then when the guard was out, Popat came calm again, like nothing happened before. It's just, he was controlling the anger, using it really in Krishna's service. That, um, that also happened in Amsterdam with the uh, installation of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. And they, uh, they, did, they didn't know anything, they did everything wrong. And Prabhupada was shouting at them that uh, they didn't prepare anything for, for the bathing of the deities and so on. That, and then there was a, a prior sacrifice, and Prabhupada said, yeah, there are no foods around, so get me foods. And the devotee went in the kitchen and started to cut fruits and, and brought them these cut fruits, <laughs> completely the little. And Prabhupada was shouting to them, and the, and the Dutch television was there, but Prabhupada didn't care. But then, but then, uh, of course, in Amsterdam, uh, out of down there, uh, a lot of hippies. And sometimes they come to the temple and some were acquainted or met, met, met a bit with the philosophy. And one of these hippies, when Papa was so angry, was, he told him, why don't you chant Hare Krishna? And Papa took his beats and started to follow his instructions, walking up and down, chanting Hare Krishna. Anyway, anger using in the service of Krishna. But th the point is that when we use the anger in the service of Krishna, without attachment, he controls the anger. It's not going to degrade them. It's of a different quality. The, the, well, anger degrades one, but here not, because it's no attachment. It's such using in the service of, and it does not affect one. When one becomes really angry on a hotel platform, it affects your chest, your eyes, everything. It's not so good. Okay, but then that's uh, 39, verse 38. 
Domina vičateva nie jata tak so malina si jatol bena vitoga vas tata dene dama vitam. As fai is covered by smoke, as a mirror is covered by dust, or as embryo is covered by the womb, the living entity is similarly covered by different degrees of this lust. So these are three analogies, and you need to remember them. Fire is covered by smoke. That represents the human life. The, 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 so, so the smoke can easily be removed. So we can go out of ignorance and understand our situation. But then a mirror is covered by dust. If there is a lot of dust, you don't see yourself. You cannot recognize that, understand your spirit soul. This is animal life. Animal life. And then embryo is covered by the womb. This is tree life. It's a, a very dense covering of lust. So that's explained in the purport. That, but then Avitan Gata Metina, Kanino, and Nichavana, Kamup, and Kantia, and Tisperna, and Alena Sha. Thus, the wise living and his pure conscience becomes covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust, which is never satisfied and which burns like fire. So, so it's, it is said in the, in the Manus Mithi that lust cannot be satisfied by any amount of sense and shine, just as fire is never extinguished by constant supply of fuel. At the end, feeling happiness is the ultimate enemy of the sense and enjoyment, so-called feeling of happiness, that dangerous, that, um, yeah. The knowledge of the ziva is covered by this constant enemy in the form of lust, which is like unsatisfied fire. Just as, as it is impossible to satisfy fire by offering, can cannot satisfy, be satisfied by enjoyment. That you try to enjoy. We will hear in the fifth chapter, because the third chapter is about karma yoga. The fifth chapter is karma yoga action in Krishna consciousness. It gives details, details. That uh, five twenty two we will hear e some special go program to kayonga evate atyant van de county on at issue kamate buddha the sages have concluded that uh, when one tries to enjoy the result will be suffering that's the result and it's not worthwhile because it's very temporary that um so this is a comment on this. That's complementary, the fifth chapter to the third. More deep knowledge in the fifth chapter. In the material world, the center of all activities is sex. And this material world is called Maitunya Agara, or the shadow of sex life. Criminals who are disobedient to the laws of the Lord are shackled by sex life. Lust is the symbol of ignorance by which the living entity is kept within the, within the material world. That is the chain we carry with us. We have to come free from it. In other words, how can we measure spiritual advancement? Uh, it's when you don't have sex desire, if that diminishes your advances. Reflections. Do I want to remove the shackles of sex life that keep me in ignorance? <laughs> Good question. 40. Then Krishna start to explain where to find the enemy. Indriyana manobu dir asya distanmutsate etergi mahayatsi sakyan mapichadvena. The senses, the mind, and the intelligence are the sitting places of lust. Through them, lust covers the real knowledge of the living entity and bewilders him. The purpose. 
help up us that the enemy is in strategic positions in our mind, in our intelligence, in our senses. And the mind is, 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 is the center of all activities of the senses. This is when we hear about the sense objects, the mind generally becomes a reservoir of ideas for sense gratification. And as a result, the mind and the senses becomes the repositories of lust. Next, the intelligent department becomes the capital of such lustful propensities. Intelligence is the immediate next door neighbor, neighbor of the spirit soul. Lusty intelligence influences the spirit soul to acquire the false ego and identify with matter. And thus with the mind and senses, the spirit soul becomes addicted to enjoying the material senses and mistakes this as true happiness. That's the whole story of the condition story. That's nicely explained here. Then this first Yashyat Mabudi Konapit that we, we mentioned that before. Good, that is 40. The senses, mind, intelligence are the seeds of this lust, lust, holiday, pediabolism says. By this lust covering, the knowledge of the soul bewilders the soul. Covering the knowledge of the soul bewilders the soul. So bewilderment means that lust makes the jiva disinclined to know Atma and inclined to enjoy sense objects. Vishvana. And the sense objects starting with sound are the provinces ruled by the king called lust. Lust bewilders the jiva by covering knowledge using the senses, mind, and intelligence. Lusty intelligence influences the spirit soul to acquire the false evil and identify itself with matter, and thus with the mind and sense, the spirit soul becomes addicted to enjoying the material sense and mistakes is for true happiness. It becomes an addiction. A question for us. What awareness do I have of the enemy of lust sitting in my own mind, intelligence, and senses? How do I know? Mm -hmm. 34, 41. Um, now, 41, Krishna is going to explain how to conquer the enemy. Das matvam in the anya dam yam yavar takshaba papmanam pai yedam yanavishyanam nashnam. Therefore, Jim best of the Bhartas in the very beginning curved the great symbol of, of sin by regulating the senses and slay his destroyer of knowledge and self realization. So, regulating the senses. Very important. We should eat at certain times of the day. It's very regular. That, um, regulating the senses. The Bhagavad Gita gives us that general and specific knowledge of the self. Living entities are part and parcels of the Lord, and therefore they are simply meant to serve the Lord. The consciousness is called Krishna consciousness. So from the very beginning of life, one has to learn this Krishna consciousness. And therefore, one, one becomes full, fully Krishna conscious and act accordingly. Hmm. In the last paragraph, it speaks more about, about regulating the senses. When love of God deteriorates into lust, it's very, very difficult to return to the normal condition. Nonetheless, Krishna consciousness is so powerful that even a late beginner can, be, can become, a, become a lover of God by following the regulated principles of devotion service. Regulated principles of devotion service. What are these regulated principles? We have four of them. The four regulated principles hearing about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, chanting and doing service. That is the proper 
uh, practice of devotional service. So from any stage of life and from, from the time of understanding its urgency, one, one can begin regulating the senses in Krishna consciousness, devotional service of the Lord. So devotional service is itself the regulation. And turn the lust of God at the highest perfect stage of, of human life. Baladevitya Bhushan, therefore in the beginning, regulating the sense of Anishkan karma or best of the bad, kill this demon which destroys scriptural knowledge and realization of Atma. Kill this lust, this demon. So Baladevitya and this lust is a demon in our heart. So yes, Krishna kills steal demons in Vrindavan and every demon is a, is represents a kind of lust that um, you can that's actually Tanya Maharaj gives seminars on that very nice and by hearing the pastime we are killing the demon in heart first 341 when love of God deteriorates in, into lust it's very difficult to return to the normal condition one can become Krishna conscious and turn lust into love okay what's there for us what prevents me to assimilate scriptural knowledge and realize my position as Atma an eternal service of ser servant of Lord Krishna it's this lust that's what the answer Okay. But now, but how to practice this? First, Krishna says, in the Yani Pranya or in the Epia Pranmana, Mansas to Pravati, Yogu De Astastisa. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the sense. Intelligence is higher than the mind. And the, and the soul is higher than the intelligence. So that's important. We must know that the soul is higher. The soul must control the intelligence. The intelligence controls the mind. The mind controls the senses. The senses control the object of the sense. That, uh, so how does, con does the spirit soul control the intelligence? By desire that you must do that you must follow this knowledge of Krishna and Bhagavad Gita and then when we get transcendental knowledge and we purify the intelligence and the intelligence will use that knowledge to push forward the mind he said you must engage the mind your, you must think of Krishna and engage the senses in service. And then the mind under control of the intelligence executes. And that's the liberated situation, that's acting in Krishna consciousness. But everyone in this material world is different. They think they are the mind, their feelings, and the mind misuses the intelligence to satisfy the senses. And the soul is a zombie. Thinks I'm because when it's not existing, like because it thinks I'm the mind. Does that make sense? Do we understand the point? So what's the solution? Is transcendental knowledge. We need knowledge how to act as a spirit soul. And so we have to strengthen the intelligence with this transcendental knowledge. And that's what Krishna says in the last verse. Knowing myself to be transcendental to material senses, mind and intelligence of mind are Arjun, one should study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence, by spiritual knowledge. And thus, with spiritual strength, con conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust. That, uh, yes. So, 
43, thus realizing that the soul is distinct from the intelligence, fixing the mind in the soul by the fixed intelligence, destroy the enemy of, in the form of lust, which is difficult to conquer. Oh, my God, actually, let's follow this. And here, when the soul is firm, then it controls senses, mind, intelligence, and lust. The soul must control the intelligence. By design, and do that. So desire for overloading, overloading, and for sense gratification is the greatest enemy of the conditioned soul. But by the strength of Krishna consciousness, one can control the material senses, the mind, and intelligence. Reflections. Can you be happy if you are bitten by the snake of lust and your mind and senses are in control? No, not possible. So, that's it. Any questions? Yes. In addition to getting the content and knowledge, you control the mind. If I require something, do, do we not require? Do we not need to do something in addition to content and knowledge? The knowledge we get, you know, we are teaching and we are getting knowledge, that doesn't purify the mind. Although temporarily we feel that you know, the mind is purified, but no. The transcendental knowledge we acquire, and then we must know how to use this transcendental knowledge. The, yes. The, yeah, therefore, we're going into the fourth chapter, and 434 is stopped in a We need a spiritual master. Because without the spiritual master, we can, uh, we do not understand the practical value that uh, he has done it. He knows how to do it. He has gone to obstacles, challenges. He knows the challenges. That it, it's like you cannot just get it from book knowledge. And like yeah, I study all the books about surgery and then i'm going to my, to do my first operation who wants to be my patient no one or or i i, I study how to drive a bus that in, in from the books and then i'm going to drive a bus who wants to drive me no one that uh, or you want to 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 play a musical instrument you cannot learn that Theoretically, you, know, you must learn from an, from, you must learn from an expert. That, uh, so we talk a lot about the supplies is not enjoying, but oftentimes in Christian consciousness, we do enjoy. So, how do you understand that? No, no, that's wrong. The purpose of life is enjoyment. But we are seeking the enjoyment in the body, in the platform, on the body platform. The real enjoyment is lies in our loving relationship with Krishna. Then you feel ecstasy. This love is a higher enjoyment. The purpose of life is enjoyment, but we should not seek it in the lower nature because the soul is by nature higher nature spiritual nature so we must not we cannot become happy by trying to, con to control inferior nature material nature we are upper apracati we are the higher nature krishna says we will all learn that in the seventh chapter of the Bible, that uh, so we must be connected with the spiritual nature, and then we, we, we will be happy. 
in the um, so the life is for enjoyment, but spiritual enjoyment. As long as your heart is contaminated, you cannot enjoy it spiritually. Your heart must be pure. But in Srila Prabhupada explains, if we engage in pure devotion service, even with, an, with a contaminated heart, we will feel satisfied. And sometimes we have a break too, we feel something. When you have a gift, and sometimes you can feel some ecstasy from that, but that's, but we cannot maintain it. That because our heart is impure. Yeah. Something else? There's more comment about the attention. When you're showing that the balam flies to the one who was shown. Yeah. So somebody asked Muhammad Ali, the one who was a wrestler. Yeah. So he used to say that Muhammad Ali was great. Used to call himself like Muhammad Ali was great. Yeah. And then he was terrorist. Yeah. yeah. Then somebody asked him again yeah, when he was in the wheelchair. But now, how do you feel about what you would say? He say, I, I still feel that I am the great, but I am the greatest fool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you. Good. Good, thank you very much. Then we continue tomorrow with the fourth chapter, very important chapter. Then we will learn how to act on this book. So, but uh, thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.